Whoopi Goldberg on The View has just threatened to jail President Trump. How she's going to do that, I'm not quite sure. She's threatened to jail him if he even thinks about touching entitlement programs. The bad management of entitlements, tremendous bad management of entitlements. There's tremendous amounts of things and numbers of things you can do. Yeah, we could put you in jail. (laughs) For all of your... For all of your entitlements. You know, Social Security is not an entitlement. We paid for that. We we paid for that. Every time you get a check, you paid into... This is is your money. Yeah. You know, so does, does does he have some supporters so obsessed with the idea of beating Democrats that they're not focused on what this man is saying? A little bit of a non sequitur here from Whoopi, as is often the case on The View. Yeah, listen, our entitlement programs are actually kind of financially out of whack here, and they have been for several years. Yeah, we're going to put you in jail if you... Uh, <laughs> what? Huh? You're already trying to put him in jail for like 900 years or something. <laughs> I don't, okay, now you're going to put him in jail for suggesting that maybe we need to tweak aspects of the federal budget? Okay. Uh, she brings up a point, though, that is an actual controversy in politics and has been for decades. And it's a point uh, that has split the right, splits the Republican Party. It's a big point of change when Trump took over the Republican Party from the party as it had been in the decade prior. And... It's a controversy that has rocked the Daily Wire. Should Republicans reform entitlements? What do you reform entitlements? You're going to take away my Social Security? You're going to take away my Medicare? You're going to throw Granny off a cliff? Like Barack Obama once accused Paul Ryan of trying to do? Uh, no, I don't think so. But but there is a big split here. Uh, ben and Matt both got in trouble for saying that we need to lower the retire or raise the retirement age and, you know, reform entitlements yesterday. And some Republicans, some conservatives attacked them for, for saying this, some defended them. And so what's it all about? 10 years ago, I guess more now, maybe a dozen years ago, during the height of the Tea Party movement, entitlement reform was a big issue that Republicans wanted to take on because it had always been a third rail in American politics. You even suggest touching Social Security, Medicare, You are getting thrown out of office. You are dead on the campaign trail. But people like Paul Ryan started to do it, and they got creamed for it, and the Democrats and Obama really hammered them for it. But the Republicans kept it up. They said, look, entitlements make up most of the federal budget. When we say entitlement programs, by the way, we're not saying that it's it's quite like a welfare program. I mean, Whoopi Goldberg makes a point here, which is you pay into Social Security. You pay into Medicare. So it's not, not like you're on the dole or something. This is money you've paid into. And, and so you want to get the money back, except it's not money that is not actually your money in the sense that the government already spent your money. And so the entitlement reform people were always saying, well, look, uh, it's just we're running out of money. We have to raise the retirement age. It's not going to be solved. And, you know, and just, this is just a, a fiscal reality that we have to deal with. And then along came Donald Trump and along came or along returned more populist elements of the GOP. And they said, you know what? We've got other areas that we can cut. Even though entitlements make up the bulk of the federal budget, we are not going to go after entitlements. We're not going to, we're not going to try to raise the retirement age or skimp on, on Granny's Social Security check. We're going, to, we're going to grow and we're going to find money elsewhere, but we're not touching that sort of thing. So who's right? This seems like it's a major battle within the Republican Party. Both sides are going to demand that they're right. As a purely political matter, Paul Ryan was wrong. Donald Trump was right. I remember those days. I'm not denying the fiscal problem. Ben and Matt and Paul Ryan, for that matter, all are right as a financial matter. The entitlement programs have ballooned so much. The politicians have been so irresponsible with, you know, this this so-called social security fund, which isn't really a fund. They just spend all the money. Yeah, that the only way to get the budget in any way in line is to to deal with the majority of the federal budget. So as a financial matter, they're right. As a political matter, that's not the correct view. The premise back in the height of the Tea Party was 
we need to stop focusing on the social issues and we need to focus on the economic issues. Mitch Daniels, who I love, he was a great governor in Indiana, he suggested a social truce so that we could get our fiscal house in order and deal with the new red menace. This red menace, not Soviet communism, this red menace consisting of ink on a ledger because we were in the red. Didn't work. Didn't work. We pulled back on the social issues a little bit. Did we fix the fiscal problem? No. The fiscal problems only got worse because the miscalculation of the Tea Party and the entitlement reformers and the all of those eggheads was that you could fix the fiscal problems and then fix the social problems. That's not how it works. You have to fix the social problems first. This is something that Trump, I'm not saying it was conscious, maybe it's pure instinct, it's purely unwitting. But whatever it is, Trump and the more populist wings of the GOP realized, you're not going to fix your accounting problems until you fix your social problems. We're talking about politics here, folks. We're talking about society. The social problems are, are everything. The, the, the way our, our books balance out is a consequence of how our society actually functions. So if you don't have functional borders, if you don't have strong families, if you don't have a decent education system, if you don't have a sound economy, you're just, which the economy is is both a fiscal matter, but obviously a social matter too. We're talking about people working and producing and buying things. If you don't have that all squared away, you're not going to, you're not going to balance the the ledger. You're not going to fix the debt. It's just simply not going to happen. Okay. So, I, I sympathize with people who look at the federal budget. They say there's only really one way to make a dent into the federal budget. Right. But the only way to even start to do that is to fix the social problems. You, you, have, to, you have to make America great again before you can fix the debt. Between those two slogans, we tried it. We tried, I'm not even, I'm not even uh, just surmising here what might possibly work hypothetically. We tried it. We did the Tea Party. It didn't work. All, it's not that we gave up the social issues and we won on the fiscal issues. We just lost everything. <laughs> okay, and then we tried. We decided we're going to start running a little bit more on the social issues, on the border, on not you know castrating our children, on strong American families, on American national identity, and get. And we started to win a little bit more. We started to put together a more coherent political coalition rather than trying to advocate some, you know, abstract form of libertarian economics that appeals precisely to no one other than the donor class, which uh, unfortunately, no matter how much money they pour into the campaigns, those campaigns are not going to appeal to most Americans. Now, speaking of the left's campaign strategy, it has now come out, Joe Biden had a strategy for the State of the Union, and it's a strategy for his broader 2024 campaign, and that is to find social media influencers to show up, go to a private you know, screening of the State of the Union, and then tweet and Insta and TikTok about it. Here are some influencers talking about it. Joe Biden invited 70 influencers to view his State of the Union address in order to- I was one of the 70 influencers that was invited, so let me spill all the tea with you. So I got this message, I wanna say on Monday night. So I got an email from an agency And I saw the people that were CC'd on and I didn't recognize any of the other email addresses that were CC'd onto this invite. So essentially they were like, we'd love to have you at this like watch party, blah, blah, blah. But they just said it was like a watch party for the state of union address, blah, 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 whatever it's called. 24 hours before the state of the union address is when Biden, which is what this original creator was talking about, was when Biden was like, yo, if TikTok is going to get banned, I would totally sign on that. Hard stop, right? I was like, oh, no, absolutely not. After Biden has used TikTok to campaign certain things recently anyway, so I was like, you're full of crap. Um, so I don't go, right? And I just kind of leave it on red. And then right at that time too, the agency was like, here's all the concept briefs of your posting. And so that's something that we do as influencers when we have brand deals and we have sponsorships, we have these things called concept briefs. And it's all these approved talking points that we can make videos about afterwards. I didn't know that posting was like, asked. It wasn't asked in the original invite. Felt really gross about it. Felt really gross about it, but you know, the Biden campaign is trying to hire the influencers. Okay. I think this is probably a good idea. I was not asked to do, I I was at the state of the union, as I may have mentioned on this show. And I don't know, I didn't get paid by any, any political parties to influence about it. The Republicans don't really focus on this. 
the, the influencers. The Democrats do because they tend to be a little more avant-garde in the culture. And so what are they seeing? They're seeing that influencers are the new movie stars and the new news anchors. They're, they're actually both of them because your eyeballs are much more likely to be on your phone now than they are to be on your TV or certainly on your movie screen. So if you, if you want to use cultural figures to push your political agenda, you know, maybe you go to Brad Pitt, maybe, sure. Like it's, it, movies are still, uh, still sort of a thing. Maybe you go to George Stephanopoulos. I mean, that's why, you know, the Democrats installed him there at, in the network news after he left the Clinton White House. But more consistently, you're, go, you're going to go to the social media influencers. Those are the people to talk to. This helps to explain why the Oscar ratings this year were terrible. You, if you read it, any headlines about it, you'll see the headline saying, the Oscar ratings this year were pretty good. They weren't pretty good. The, the Oscar ratings this year were the fourth lowest ratings ever in Oscars history. They only had 19.5 million viewers. So it's a four-year high. It's a 4% increase compared to last year. Last year, it was 18.8 million. But think about what it was 10 years ago. 10 years ago, the Oscars drew 43 0.7 million viewers, more than double the number of viewers that they drew this week. Five years ago, 30 million people tuned in. That's just five. That's not even 10 years ago. That's five years ago. The numbers are plummeting. There's a little, maybe a little tick up this year over that year, but generally the numbers are just plummeting. Why is that? People will say it's not because the movies are losing their prestige. It's because people are cutting the cable they're not, they're consuming media in other ways. Yeah, but that's all, that's all to say the same thing, right? You're right. People are not watching TV as much anymore. So the TV stars are losing their influence. People, people are also not watching the movies as much anymore. So the movie stars are losing their influence and it's going elsewhere. Where is it going? It's going to the influencers. What a job, what a job. To, I guess, am I sort, I'm sort of an influencer, aren't I? I I'm not like hot enough and I don't understand TikTok enough to really be an influencer. You know, I got to be like a, got to be like a hot 22 year old, like workout chick or something. That's how I could really maximize my influencing abilities. And then the Democrats would pay me a lot of money and they would be smart to do it. That is where the eyeballs are going. Joe Biden obviously doesn't know anything about this, but the Democrats are pretty wise. They're pretty wise. They always know how to push the levers of pop culture. And movies are not where the culture is made today. And TV is not where the culture is made. The culture is made, for better or worse, on TikTok. Man, what a great clip that was. Now, hold up, ring that bell, subscribe to the Michael Knowles YouTube channel, and we will see you next time.